Hey, good to see you guys. Welcome back to my channel. So today, I thought I would discuss my first video where I missed those three baboons quite horribly. And uh, I thought we'd just do a little bit of an analysis of actually what went down on that particular day. So, it is quite important that we learn from our mistakes. You know, if we're not making mistakes, then we can basically just give up hunting and we can move on and take up fishing or something else where we can make mistakes. You know, guys that are experienced, um, guys that can shoot well, I thought I was one of them. And uh, that brought me back down to size. And it was quite a hard thing to put onto, onto YouTube and to share with you guys. But I just, you know, I think I, I showed you in the last video that maybe we are just human at the end of the day we're all human whether we like it or not and things just go wrong and that's what's called hunting it what it, it is what keeps us coming back for more so what did we learn out of that well i think there's a couple of critical things that we need to look at when we analyze what went wrong there first of all i've never shot out of such a dark blind yes i've been in many blinds beautiful blinds that are built out of concrete and glass and you know have a bed in to sleep and all sorts of things but this blind I had to make so dark that the baboons could not pick up a movement inside there and it is my fault I should have known better I should have known to take a broadhead butt and maybe just put a broadhead butt up and shoot out the blind and just ensure that everything is right and I don't do that. There's another tip that I would like to share with you guys as well while we, we're discussing shooting out of blinds. It is important to test how your arrows and how your equipment works out of a blind. Uh, with mine in particular, I have a tendency to shoot one inch low out of a dark blind or out of any blind for that matter. Shooting out of a tree stand, you know, you're in the open air, it's, it's pretty much like walk and stalk. You can't, you can't really make too many problems. But when you're shooting from a very dark place to a very light place, there is a difference. For me, there's a very noticeable difference. I can't put... I, I'm normally an, uh, an, X, an X man at, at 20 yards. I can, I, can put this, I can put an arrow in an X. But put me in a blind... And I'm printing them one inch low the whole time. I went back and I wanted to break down and evaluate what was going so wrong with this whole process. And the conclusion that I came to is I never put lights on my pins. You know, as, as I said in the video, I do lots of walk and stalk. And I, I shoot out of open elevated blinds. Um, I'm a typical hunter that suffers from ADD. So I, I battled this at long, still for too long. And, uh, you know, when you're out in an open blind or an open tree stand or you walk and stalk, you've got a changing environment around you the whole time. You know, you in an open tree stand, you can look pretty much 360 around you. I find it very sort of frustrating when you're now confined to where you've just got a small window and you can only see this direction. And if you're lucky, there's a window on the left and there's a window on the right. And you can maybe see a little bit here or there. Um, so I suffer from sitting in a blind for too long. Uh, my limit is normally about three to four hours. But I kind of, yeah, I've got this trick worked out, you know, I, I'm fortunate because I live here, I'm able to make use of things like trail cameras and I'm able to pattern animals and I can pretty much get those animals, I know when they're going to be in there and I just make sure that I'm in, in the blind an hour before I need to be and uh, then I'm able to convert. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's just about life. You just gotta you gotta learn from your mistakes. So anyway, what I did is I took a broadhead butt. I went back to the blind, and uh, I've got a broadhead butt that's got a sort of a big eight ring and then a little ten, ten ring. And what I did is I punched arrows out with no no lights on the pins, and it's just all over the place. I mean, I'm, I'll link the video in shortly, roundabout now. And uh, you'll see I can't hit the butt for, for nuts. Then, 
clip I'm going to show you is is with me turning the light on now with a resistor light onto the tip pins and those arrows sink into the ten ring so now we're going to the lighted pins and you'll see the nets clip I'm going to bring it in shortly so watch this quickly and that's just a simple thing like forgetting to turn on a light on your pins or not testing your equipment so my suggestion to you is that when you go to hunt or you go to a new place to go and hunt um, take a broadhead butt with you um, if you've got opportunity climb into a hide and just shoot one or two arrows and just see where your arrows are landing you can practice this at home what you can do at home is you can put an outside light on or a light you can light up a butt with a, a flashlight or a torch and uh, what you can do is you can shoot from darkness into that light and see if there's any difference I'd love to hear back from you on this give me your feedback I'd love to know if your arrows also fall low or is it just craziness with me I like to shoot pin sights you know I, I, I use a, a spot hog hog it I'm by no means sponsored by them they've got five pins I just find with hunting when you've got a range an animal and you've got an adjuster slider and then range again and, and the animals moved it gets very technical and, and you're wasting time because you're ranging sighting you, you you've got to you've got to try and draw in that time and the animals moved three or four yards yes you can hold over with a single pin there are benefits to a single pin in that your picture is a lot clearer you've only got one thing to focus on but you know one thing that ABO or, or 3d shooting has taught me is that having multiple pins if you're able to bracket and you're able to understand the dynamics of bracketing <coughs> you you save so much time you can range draw and let that arrow fly so cut down on your time uh, make your equipment as quiet as possible put moleskin on your arrow rests make sure that your cams are oiled that when, when you draw back you haven't got this creaking sound get yourselves fit people it's I can't tell you how great a deal fitness is with bow hunting you know to be able to 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 draw back that bow um, in a in a quiet silent motion um, it's, it's, it's vital, it's, it, it's very very important um, to be able to hold against the back wall there until your animal is ready or until you are ready to take the shot to be able to let down quietly I can't tell you when you're sitting 18 yards or 20 yards from a warthog in an elevated stand and you've got to let down and, and you go clunk those pigs are gone they've gone so we learn from our mistakes yes I was certainly very fortunate I didn't wound a single animal in that thank goodness because I, I don't like wounding animals it's it's horrible it's something that I see a lot of uh, because I hunt with a lot of people we put a lot of animals in the salt each year it's just part of my work so my job or you know what I wanting to to achieve by bringing you this channel is just to try and help you correct simple mistakes I'm still guilty of them and it's it's perfectly human the other thing that I want to say to you is is, is practice with your broadheads broadheads are expensive but it's important that you practice with them they are extremely different from field points and I don't care what the marketing guys that say this point will fall where your um, where your field point is practice at 80 yards if you're if your if your broadheads fall will you where your field points are happy days you're one of the lucky ones it never worked for me I've converted to slow heavy arrows um, for me I just find that I'm getting better results animals are not getting hit uh, or they're not feeling they're getting hit I've got this amazing baboon video that's coming up I'd love to I can't wait to share with that with you I've just got a few internet problems at the moment so I can't really resolve that and until I resolve that, well, you guys are going to be in for these short little clips for now. Um, basically, uh, my upload speed is about 0.4 megabytes per second. So you can imagine trying to load a 1080 uh, YouTube video that is 20 minutes long. And then the internet connection drops out and uh, we can just go on and on. Let's not complain. Life is good to us. 
We live in a beautiful environment. It's, it's awesome to be here with you guys.